brilliant. I see some glory of God in everybody's face. Amen. Amen. The fasting is working. Hallelujah. People are losing weight. Amen. Yes. It's good. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm talking on a topic removing satanic strongholds. Removing satanic stronghold. I will try my best to be on par. If I have to rise, I'll rise. So if you are writing anything, make sure that you do it fast. Removing satanic strongholds. Strongholds are certain spirits, demons that are characterized with power, that are characterized with exceptional strength, that ordinary people are not able to take them out or to overrule them or to remove them. Hallelujah. So strongholds are certain demons when they come into your life. They don't, they just don't go. You can fast, you can receive prophecies and, and lots of things and they still don't want to go. Because they are strong hold. As the name implies, they are very strong. Amen? And their thought is to make sure that there are certain things in your life that God has ordained, that God has decreed, that God has declared concerning your life. You are, not, you are never or not able to overcome and overtake. So it's like they come to occupy specific areas in your life. That is why we see some Christians, even though they love God, they still have what is called addictions. Hallelujah. Because that addiction is being operated by a strong demon. That the the person himself or herself does not have the power to be able to overrule it. But tonight, every soul we hold in our life, we're going to remove it by the power of the Lord of Jesus. Hallelujah. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Let's be quick. My Bible story is Matthew chapter 12. Future rising, please keep quiet. Matthew 12, 29. Uh-huh. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? How can one enter into a strong man's house? And spoil his goods. And spoil his goods. Except the first. Except first. Bind the strong man. You bind the strong man. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not 
We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our world are not the weapons of our are not carnal. It's not in the flesh. But those weapons we use are mighty through God. To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Those weapons we have. We, we are able to use it to cast out imaginations. And every hand thing that they saw besides. Against the knowledge of God in our life. Hallelujah. And we must bring those things into captivity. Praise the Lord. See, that is why it's not that we pray and you pray it, that you say, Father, give it to me. You gave it to Abraham. You gave it to Isaac. You gave it to Jacob. Oh, Lord, it is my turn. Give it to me. The very first day you began to pray that prayer, God gave it to you. If you did not receive it, then it means a stronghold or a strong man has taken hold of that which you may be looking for, which God has already released. Somebody was asking me this question three years ago. She said, Pastor, how come uh, God said this and didn't come to pass? Praise the Lord. Number one, you got to understand that when the enemy begin to know or begin to hear about something that God is about to do in your life, they will fight against it. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Daniel. No one understand this. And so even if you receive prophecy and you don't pray and work on that prophecy, it will not come to pass. Why? Because the work of the strong man and strong holes are to block and to hold back and to make sure that you don't receive that blessing. The book of Daniel. Let's open to chapter 2 and see. The Bible says Daniel began to pray. He began to fast and pray. And the first day, he began praying. The answer came. But something has happened. The Bible says the prince of Persia. Hold on to that prayer. Is anybody in the book of Daniel? Yes. Hallelujah. Removing satanic stronghold. Uh, if you see a place, you can read for us. Daniel began to fast and pray for 21 days. And then the Bible said that an angel was released on that same day. But the prince of Persia hold on to that prayer. Anybody? If you do not see it, verse chapter 9. Is it chapter 9? I'm presenting a petition before God, Yahweh my God, concerning the holy mountain of my God. While I was praying, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the first vision, came to me in my extreme weariness about the time of the evening offering. He gave me this explanation Daniel, I have come now to give you understanding. At the beginning of the petition, an answer went out, and I've come, and I've come to give it for you a treasure by God. So consider the message and understand the vision. Hallelujah. So Daniel, uh, we have moved away from where the, the prince of Persia was fighting the, the, the prayer. I'm trying to look at that. Huh? Okay, we know the story. We know the story. Daniel began to pray. And the Bible says that the answer was released in the same day. But because the prince of Persia did not want Daniel to get that answer, he was able to fight the angel that was bringing the answer and hold the angel in prison. So Daniel continued praying and praying until the 21 day. And God released another angel who was stronger than the first angel and 
and the demon, and the both of them came and fought the demon, and then released the handsome to Daniel. Then the angel went back to fight again against the prince of the Persian in order to release the angel. Praise the Lord. So there is what is called principalities and powers, but there is also a strong man or a strong hope. Those strong men and strong hopes, they are the demons that when Satan find out that the little man of demons are not able to, 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 to handle you, they are the one that comes. If you are to, to watch Prophet TV Joshua, you will find out that some prophets, some, some pastors, some people that have
Nobody can enter into a strongman's house and spoil his goods. You first have to bind the strongman. And then he will spoil. You can spoil his goods. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain things that some men or strongholds do against humanity. Number one, they bring lack of progress in life. There are certain people that some of us, no matter what is done to rectify the situation, nothing changes. There was a situation in First Chronicles chapter four. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter four. You see, demons don't care about your handsomeness, your beauty, your education. They don't care about your title. Praise the Lord. The only thing they are scared of is the name Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez and said, I gave them to him in pay. Verse 10. Jabez called out to God Israel of Israel. If only you will bless me and send my mother and let your hand be with me and keep me from her so that I will not cause any pain. And God granted his request. There was lack of progress in the life of this young man called Jabez. Very, very honorable. He's handsome, he's tall, he's big. He has a macho kind of body. But nobody looks at a uh, Davis. When you go for an interview, they say, man, you are very beautiful, handsome, but unfortunately, I don't know why, but I can't give it to you. There was no progress in his life until he began to call upon the name of the Lord. Tonight, we are about to call upon the name of the Lord. And every stronghold and every stronghold in our life has to be arrested in the name of Jesus. There are certain regular, unexplainable happenings, mysterious death of family members. When you look at Job chapter 1 verse 6 to 22 Job chapter 2 verse 1 to 7. We hear about the story of Job. His children, all of them died in one day. All his goods were destroyed. Everything he had was taken away in one day. Those things are something that are unexplainable happenings. It is mysterious that happens in certain people's life. Those are the results of strong men and strong goals. Unreasonable, overpowering, composite habits that defy reason and willpower. I mean, how can a human being sit down and all of a sudden begin to drink alcohol to the extent that he will, he will drink 